like it, it, it has been an interesting life. There have been times when I've wanted a job, you know, I, I thought it'd be so much easier just to have a job. But one of the things, one of the things I noticed after I left, left my last job and I started painting full time, is you miss the long weekends. <laughs> I do remember the moment I had been thinking of, of leaving my, my last job to paint full time. And I saw a movie called The Flim Flam Man with George C. Scott. And um, they, were, they were traveling con men. And I, I don't mean anything by, by that. But uh, they, had, they had been chased out of one town and, and they were sitting beside a stream. And George said, most people spend 50 weeks out of the year so that they can do this for two weeks. And that's when I realized I have to follow what I really feel I want to do, or at least give it a shot. And I was lucky enough to be in the right spot at the right time. As a matter of fact, I was, I was having a bath on my 30th birthday and I was soaking in a bathtub. And I thought, God, I'm 30 now. Maybe I should consider doing something serious. You know, but it, this is what I wanted to do. Or make movies or be an animator. I had an aunt that uh, was an oil painter and she was a, an amateur, but she was quite good. And she gave me watercolors to play around with when I was really small and she was taking care of me. Um, but then one day, one Saturday, she said, what would you like to do today? Would you like to go to the art gallery or would you like to see a movie? And I chose the movie, and she took me to see Fantasia. And it just blew my socks off. I come out of there, I want to be an artist, I want to be an animator, I want to be a filmmaker. Um, distracted by various things, you know, through growing up and, and so on, but that, that's what was in my heart. When I started off and, and started uh, selling my paintings in Sault Ste. Marie, there was only about, there was Gordon McKenzie, uh, Ken Bradford, Ken McDougall, and Doug Bradford, and Ken Danby, but Ken was long gone to Southern Ontario by the time I got here. Um, and I, I had the very first art show ever on St. Joseph Island back in 1973. And there was very few events on the weekends um, back then when I, when I started. Um, and there wasn't any other art shows until we started Art in the Dock in Hilton Beach. And then I got involved in Foreign Friends and Bruce Mines. And of course now, as you all know, that seems there's almost an art or craft show somewhere every weekend in the summer. So it's, a, it's sort of a, t a totally different circumstances than, than when I first got into it. Well, it, it, I, w I was selling in, in the, um, a little gallery b behind Walsh's camera. But anyways, and, uh, Angie Walsh, the woman who ran the gallery, phoned me one day and said the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario wants someone to donate a painting uh, to Bill Davis, who was the premier at the time. And the long and the short of it was I gave him a, a painting of, of a buggy and, and I told Angie, I, was, I said, Angie, when I give this painting to Bill Davis, I'm going to ask him to think of Highway 17 every time he looks at this painting of a buggy. And uh, she said, no, 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 <laughs> but he loved it. Um, he dub doubled over in laughter and repeated it to the crowd that was there. His sort of stamp of approval by saying that um, um, gave me credibility and, and it, it led to my first show on St. Joseph Island in 1973 to become a, a huge success. And that's really what started the ball rolling. There was one time I was up on Lake Superior and nobody knew I had gone up there. Um, you know, it was just one of those spontaneous things and, and anyways, there was, nobody was around. And I was walking out on one of, uh, one of those points, and this was probably in late September. And I walked out this point, and there was this one area where I had to um, 
sort of go go around a bush, and in in the the ground at that point was all rock, and it sloped down into Lake Superior, and I was about 300 feet from the beach, and I slipped, <laughs> and I was heading for Lake Superior in September, <laughs> on my own, 300 feet from the beach, and I thought this could be trouble, but. I managed to hang on to that, that, that bush. I've um, not done, really, I haven't done a hell of a lot. <laughs> but one of the things I've done is, is um, as my prices escalated, I started um, doing more, having more reproductions done. But now with the, the advent of the computer and, and the, the fact that you can print at home and you can get high quality prints at home, um, I've got more into the much lower priced reproductions. Like frankly, that lady that was that was here, I did those two two paintings for her sisters, and uh, now she wants co copies of them, and they were copies of them. That, as a matter of fact, this is one of the things I complain about my paintings, is that they don't wear out. <laughs> you don't need another one in 20 years. And now, because I've been doing it so long, people are inheriting my paintings. So they don't need a new one for over the fireplace in their new house. It is definitely a roller coaster. It's definitely a, ro a roller coaster. I, I, I often say to people, if you want to pay for this $1,500 painting over a year, I'm happy to take a, a number of post-dated checks because I make the bulk of my money in the, in the summer months, but January, February is very, very skinny. And to have a hundred dollar check from you to, to pull out to pay for the groceries is very handy. I, I was fortunate enough uh, to have a private audience with Prince Charles. And it was five minutes with me, Prince Charles, and a guy with a sword in a room in, in the Royal York Hotel in Toronto. Um, He's asking me questions like crazy about watercolor. And I'm thinking he's just been pumped up, you know, because they're trained to be able to put you at your ease and so on and so forth. But anyways, um, you know, during the conversation, um, I, and we were talking about the watercolor, it, it became apparent to me he knew what he was talking about. And th then I happened to say to him, I had no idea you painted. Your, I know your father paints. And Charles immediately said, oh yeah, but he only paints in oil. <laughs> and then I knew. <laughs> and it was a faux pas. I shouldn't have said um, your father. That's too familiar. <laughs> but he, did, he didn't seem to mind. And I, was, I presented him with a painting of mine that's now in his collection. Also, also, no, yes, I'll tell you. Um, there was a guy that was a policeman here uh, attached to the Thessalon uh, detachment, and we, we became friendly. And um, Wayne went back to Algoma College uh, to get his degree. He, like, he rose like, like crazy. But yeah, any, anyways, when I was going to see Prince Charles, I didn't know, but I was fully checked out, you know, by the police. And and, and the OPP, when royalty is in Ontario, it's the OPP that uh, protects them. And Wayne was in this special intelligence group at the time. Wayne was asked if he knew me, and of course, well, hell yeah, I put him in jail a number of times, which is bullshit, but, but anyways, Wayne said, we had this idea of grabbing you just before you went in the, in, in, in to see Prince Charles and, and start drilling you about smuggling smuggling liquor across the border. Like I lived at Sailor's Encampment 1,200 feet from Michigan for 35 years. <laughs> we were thinking of really you know, doing this, but then we had visions of you leaping out of the seventh floor window of the Royal York Hotel. And I'm 74, I don't know how much time I've got left, there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to do, um, um, like painting, uh, painting wise. And um, yeah, you know, it was interesting. At 50, I realized 
theoretically, half my life is over. At 60, I realized I was getting old. And at 70, you start to think, how much time do I have left, you know? So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things I, I still want to do, but I, I don't know how much longer. I, I, it's like my 45th annual, annual summer show, and people uh, that I run to often ask me, um, are you still painting? And I say, yeah, my banker insists. <laughs>